In today's video, we'll hear from someone whose dietitian told her she could eat whatever carb she wanted as long as she stayed within certain limits. But is it really true that all carbs are pretty much the same? We'll also hear from an individual who felt the icy fingers of fear grip his heart when he was told he was a diabetic. Then he found the Beat Diabetes YouTube channel, made some changes, tried some recipes, and found deliverance. This person writes, My doctor said I had to see a dietitian to learn about my diabetes. She's had diabetes for 39 years. She told me it's incurable. I need to accept that. She was amazed at how quickly I got my baseline level down to 95. She then proceeded to tell me I had to eat carbs, at least 15 per meal, 70 a day. Well, at least that's you know not too bad. That's still fairly low carb, but you don't have to eat any carbs. Or she, and then here's the worst that she told her. She was telling me a carb is a carb, so I could eat anything as long as it had the proper a carb amount. A carb is a carb, so as long as you keep your carb limits, carb limits around the right number, eat whatever carbs you like. Well, folks, that couldn't be any more wrong. A carb is not a carb. Uh, if I have, I, I have eaten a salad with over 40 car grams of carbs in it, and it didn't raise my blood sugar much. But for testing purposes, I've eaten a candy bar that had 35 grams of carbs, and it jacked it up real high. I've drunk a, a, a soda with about 40 grams of carbs, and it jacked it up high and quick. But the salad that had a little more carbs than I would normally eat did not. So a carb is not a carb. Some people will say, I'm just giving up on carbs. Well, I don't think there's any need to do that. There, you can eat salad carbs. There's things that are low carb, such as broccoli and cauliflower and green peppers and red peppers and iceberg lettuce and spinach and there's all romaine lettuce, all kinds of low carb vegetables. They're not no carb. They're low carb. And that's basically, you know, what I practice. I've never gone to the no-carb. I'll sometimes have a no-carb day or I'll sometimes have a no-carb meal and have a carnivore day or a carnivore meal. But that's about it as far as I go. Uh, I, I've never embraced that carnivore diet as, you know, all day, every day, every week, every month, every year. To me, I don't see any need for that. I believe God created plants as our food, and as long as we're wise in how we eat them, uh, we should be good, but you got to be wise. Uh, but if you're comparing a garden salad to frosted flakes and saying, well, just eat, just limit your carbs to a certain number and you're fine, well, that's just silly. And as far as having, a, uh, I forget if it was the nurse or the dietitian, oh, it was the dietitian that had uh, been a diabetic for 30-some years, had a leg that had apparently been amputated, another was in a brace, and she's telling her, you just have to accept it, diabetes is incurable. Well, the tendency toward diabetes may never go away, and I still have that tendency, and I can still eat a potato, and it'll raise my blood sugar to 200. So that tendency is there, has been there. It was there last year. It was there five years ago. It was there... 10 years ago, and it'll probably be there in another 10 years if I live that long. But just because you have the tendency doesn't mean you have to live with that. And because I don't eat high carb, except for an occasional YouTube test, uh, I keep everything in check. And my numbers are not diabetic. If you want to call me a diabetic, you can. I don't call myself one, but I know I have that tendency for sure. Okay, this person says, I'm my ex-husband's primary caregiver. I have him in a home for people who need 24-hour care. Well, this is a very compassionate lady. Most people would not be their ex-spouse's caregiver, but she is. So good for you for your compassion. She says of her ex-husband, he has memory loss and diabetes. I've been told that the original name for Alzheimer's is the diabetic brain. Haven't heard that, but uh, there, there may be, well be some truth to that. I see other people in this home that have no legs, no arms, blindness, stroke, so forth, all related to diabetes. Folks, diabetes is no, nothing to mess with. Just because you've gotten away with it so far does not mean you will continue to get away with it. You will probably pay the price if you don't make some changes. 
The lady says, I asked lots of questions about, the, uh, about these people, and I even asked some of these people the questions. She says, some of them have large oozing uh, holes on their buttocks or stumps. They're mainly bedridden. And so she, she's looking around and seeing all these diabetic patients in this home, uh, are, are diabetics in this home. And then she finds out, she says, my, I, recently I found out my A1C is at 6.2, pre-diabetic level. I was in a real panic. My mind immediately went to all the people I became friends with in this home since my ex-husband was admitted. And only one of those friends I've made is still alive. They're dying off. Depression has been my constant companion for the past three years. These were beautiful uh, people when they were young who did not heed their need to eat properly and watch their health on a daily basis. By the time they were admitted, the damage had been done to their bodies, was in full swing, and was never going to be reversed again. When we are warned about our health issues, we tell our family and friends, I want to eat what I want to eat. I want to do what I want to do. She says there's no long-term idea of steering ourselves the right way. I suggest you visit a few times a nursing home as a volunteer if necessary. Ask questions. Meet the people. Keep your eyes open. Look at what we leave for our family's last remembrance of us. Now, folks, I know we can't totally control how we end up in this life. Uh, I can't. You can't. Nobody can. But we have some say in it. And uh, if by the grace of God... I continue to avoid diabetes. I don't believe I'll end up in a nursing home for seven or eight years with my legs cut off and blind and uh, just waiting around to die. That is no way to live and that is no way to die. She says it's time to wake up and love our families enough to make the changes. Amen to that. It's not only for you, it's for your family. Do you really want your children to have to come and see you in a nursing home and see you in that condition? You've lost your legs, you're half blind, you, you can hardly function, you've got Alzheimer's, you can hardly m communicate with them. Is that the legacy you want to leave your children for them to remember the last five, seven, ten years of your life? We all desire two things when it comes to life and health on the physical side. Now, there's a spiritual side that's totally different. I won't get into that. But on the physical side, we desire, number one, we'd like to live long. Most of us would. Uh, nobody really wants to die in their 30s or 40s. And number two, we want our quality of life to be good for pretty much as long as we live. My dad had that. My mom didn't. My mom was diabetic. My dad was not. My mom spent the last 10 years of her life going in and out of the hospital. And she had both her legs cut off at different times. And then one leg had to be cut off again because it didn't heal up properly. And she was just a mess. My dad lived to be 87. And for about all but the last six months of his life, he was in great shape and in great health. He was slim. He was not diabetic. And he had a great quality of, of life for almost all of his years. The, he finally had... Uh, uh, a bump on his head and, and blood starting to uh, swell and his brain in through the brain and so forth. So he had some problems the last six months or so, but up until then he was fine. And, you know, uh, I, I used to tell him, we sometimes talk about diet. Of course, I didn't know a thing about it in those days, but I would tell him, well, whatever you're doing, it's sure working for you. Just keep it up. Well, dad ate pretty much whatever he wanted to eat, but he didn't eat much. <laughs> he had small portions. So we want to live long. We want a good quality of life. And diabetes will usually rob you of both. And this channel, this YouTube channel, is different from so many. You know, I, I see some YouTube channels once in a while. I'll, I'll see a, a cute little girl on, on a YouTube channel that's talking about makeup and things, and she's got a million viewers. And I'm like, a million viewers want to watch this girl talk about how cute she is and how if you pay enough, close enough attention, you could be cute too? I mean, that just seems ridiculous. Well, I'm not cute and I'm not even funny very much, but some of you can learn a few things and it may well, no guarantees, but it may well enable you to extend your life and have a good quality of life at the end. And that's what we all want. Okay, 
Thank you so much, this person says, for all you do for your followers. The first week after I was diagnosed diabetic, I felt like a zombie muddling through the day. I had no clue what to eat until I found your channel. When panic tried to take over, your voice was calming in my storm. I had the flashes of fear rolling across my shoulders. This person writes well. <laughs> Uh, and I had jitters in the pit of my stomach, but you were so positive and encouraging and taught me exactly what I needed to do. I've made your chia pudding, your tortilla pizza, hamburger patties and green beans. I can eat a lot of things, just not some of the things, and that's okay. Underscore. I can eat a lot of things, not everything, and that's okay. That's the attitude you need, my friend. These days, this person says, numbers are down, all is well, and life goes on while feeling a whole lot better. Thank you. I love it. The storm is over. The fears are gone. This individual knows what they need to do. They're doing it. The numbers are down, all is well. Now, I can't say for other countries, but in the U.S., we have a situation that most of us have been through, and that is when a tornado passes by your area. And when that happens, we've got emergency sirens that go off in all, almost all of our neighborhoods. And uh, you see the clouds dark and the emergency sirens going off. You turn on your TV and there is a meteorologist who's talking about the tornadoes that are coming your way. And he will talk and talk and talk. I wonder sometimes how they can find enough things to say, but it'll tell you where it's coming from, who it has hit already, uh, the direction it's going, and, you know, you need to take cover. <laughs> I'll never forget, shortly after Benedict joined me in America, we'd been married just a short while, and we had one of those tornadoes coming our way, and we were watching the the uh, the news guy, the, the meteorologist, talking about how you need to take cover, and she was getting nervous. In, in uh, Nigeria, they don't have tornadoes. Uh, they might experience part of a hurricane, but they don't have tornadoes. But anyway, she she didn't know what to do. She said, well, he says we ought to take cover. What should we do? I said, sweetie, there's not a thing we can do. We're on the second floor of an apartment. And if that tornado hits our apartment, we'll come crashing down to the first floor. And there's not much we can do about it, no matter where we are in the apartment. And I don't feel like going outside. So let's just trust God and let's just uh, hope we get through this. And we did. It went, went to the side of us. It didn't touch down where we were. But uh, we all have that experience of uh, you watch the news, you hope it doesn't come your way. And usually, you know, there'll be some hail. I think we got hail that particular night. And the winds will be strong. But guess what? Tornadoes never last too long. And suddenly it's over. And everything is quiet. No wind no hail, the storm is past. That's how this lady feels. Diabetes was coming at me like a tornado. I was in panic. Fear was rolling across my shoulders. I didn't know what to do. I was scared to death. Then I heard your voice calming me in the midst of this storm, she says to me. And she says, now I know what to do. I began to eat like you recommend. The numbers are all down. The storm is past. Well, what could be more beautiful than that? Diabetes is scary, and there's no mistake about it. It can be dangerous. It can kill you. It can maim you. It can destroy your health, but it can also be beaten. My friend, you can beat it. You don't have to be super intelligent. You don't have to have a will of iron. Uh, you, you just need to make some basic adjustments and get a little bit of motivation. And that's one of the reasons for this YouTube channel is to give you some motivation by watching these and just drinking in, immersing yourself in what we're saying. And you'll find that motivation and you'll see the numbers come down. The storm is past. All is well.